During wet seasons, most cities and rural areas alike receive plenty of water which often get wasted. And when the dry season sets in, they go to luck again. The situation is even made more complicated by the current global challenge, climate change, leading into increase in temperature and resultant decrease in water levels for most surface and underground water sources. Bulasana village and its trading center in Rengo sub-county, Masaka district, has battled the shortage of clean water in their area for years. The entire village fetches water from only two shallow wells fed by contaminated water from upstream during rainy seasons. Although the well is choking with dirt and its water is yellowish, residents as well as animals are scrambling for it as it's the only source of water. According to Issa Mutawe, fetching water on a bicycle, the water problem here is really pathetic. The source of clean water is relatively a longer distance away from Bulasana Trading Center, and so they have to resort to this. And he tells us this water source has not come without a cost. The young and old have been falling sick from waterborne diseases on a daily basis. Water is not only contaminated, but it has also become a rare commodity. <laughs> While they would be using their hard-earned cash to do other important income-generating activities, it is wasted on hospital bills, thereby draining their pockets and increasing poverty. While they appreciate the lack of water in the area, there is an understanding now through the Environment Concern Organization, TECO, that human activities are to blame for the water shortage. TECO has made it clear that protecting water catchment areas and reforestation would remove this problem in the long run. It's not uncommon to hear people in Rengo relating the lack of water and resultant poverty to the indiscriminate cutting of trees for timber, firewood and charcoal. This well, from which Hadija Nampija is fetching water, is referred to as Ilumirabana, meaning a well that swallows children, a name it got after a child allegedly drowned here. As dirty as it looks, she uses it for cooking and drinking. With this kind of water, it's almost miraculous that some people are still surviving under such conditions. Ito malaga teka o. Eno wagulu wea tinega kilira. Gona gona na yaka sasiro wako. Paka muruzi na fene tuweno nilayo. Tufumba. Tuganyo kwa te tuina cha kukula. Tujia kufatu wukuba. Chi. Tumalaga ganywa. Like Blasana village, Biangiri village is also trapped in the same water mess. Residents have even gone ahead to make channels along roads and walkways to trap rainwater that gushes down from the hills and trenches into a well down the valley. On a typical evening, children come down to this well in big numbers. 196 families of Biangiri village depend on this well for their source of domestic water supply. They are, however, a frustrated community, and the chairman could not hide his anger against their political leaders, who he decries have let them down. Just nearby is another well. While its water looks cleaner, people in this community cannot fetch water from it, because the stench that emanates from this source is unbearable. <laughs>
Nabo kusume ni na vaisi yao no sanga vasi na kupopo ya bunga banyo. Ina mivuradi vutabu ne dagari ni mungu fetu mala yon. Kwa ngo kwa leta ba na msudia ya milango kolo kwa lutsir. At least the picture is not all grim. There is a ray of hope under such a dark cloud. The environment concern Teko. A community-based organization, CBO in Masaka, with the financial support from UNDP and UNEP, Poverty Environment Initiative, PEI, is moving forward to address the water-related problems by educating communities on water harvesting and storage. The project, implemented by Government of Uganda through NEMA, has also initiated low-cost, simple-to-deploy and maintain water harvesting techniques intended to enhance the community's drinking water supplies and small agricultural production. This underground water harvesting tank has brought relief to Kibona village and most especially the families neighboring this widow, Mrs. Fulgencio Najemba. But just how does it work? Rainwater is collected from the roof of her house and channeled to an underground tank capable of serving an entire village for months in a dry spell. A wire mesh fence has been constructed around the tank to ensure safety of children. A simple but highly effective water pump is used to pump water from underground. The mechanism involves pedaling this pump and in the process water gushes out. <laughs> Nali <laughs> Even in her old age, Najemba ably pedals this pump every day, and in so doing, she relaxes her muscles on this daily exercise, which yields into clean and palatable water. This water has helped her children to remain healthy, productive and able to attend school. Water from the harvesting tank is also used for watering the garden nearby, hence additional source of income and supplementary diet. There is an increased hope that other people within the community will eventually learn the new water harvesting techniques from Teko and replicate it in their homes. Well, it's time to find out how all this is actually happening on the ground. And so we head out to visit another family in Rengo Subcounty in Masaka District. Our next stop is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Ruoza in Chito Village, where we are welcomed by Mrs. Jan Ruoza. We follow our host into the grass-thatched house that serves as protection for her underground water tank. She explains how she puts this tank together. <laughs> Nachitandika o kuche gomba ngampulida ngawaliyo emisomo jivera mubi tongo lebuli wamu kale nga tuge ndo kwe ngenda nene gata kwa misomo na yoru vanyume nyo na genda kwa misomo yo masaka kasu wabichie vyo na inga tijimpa angula na ye nifuna omisomo ogwali ogwateko kale gwanja gazi saa Okulaba anti gunji jamu chizibu echo kubanga na gena ni nambula kunzizi zeba koze. Neze gomba. Nelumu nalula bako chibo na wala nalula bako chitabi ya ameyo. Nga kala abate kubazi koze. Nene gomba. Nengamba nafe kitudeyo. Nchituwa lea waka. Obana angechi alinyamba. Tutandika mpola mpola. Nafe netu simolobu sobo zibu wafe. Era netu chikola tu teka mwetu nduba alieri, ongabu lae tuweka kenyumbo kwe kumisa, engeli ya abana, ba inzo kugwamu nebi, nituwe bijo kugwamu. This tank has a capacity of 3,000 liters and it cost the Luoza family 100,000 shillings, roughly 50 US dollars, to install it. 
The Luoza family is among those that have learned of the technique from Teko and replicated it in their home. The executive director of the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, Dr. Ariamanya Mugisha, is hopeful that people will eventually get out of their water-related problems as soon as they begin replicating the simple and cheap technology in their homes. Once you have an activity on the ground where people are able to see good results, with time they will be able to, to, to replicate so those two other, you said two other, two other individuals or families, uh, in addition to the three that we supported, those are five, I'm sure, with continued sensitization. And them seeing the benefits, the benefits of taking clean water, reducing on diarrhea diseases and so on and so on, uh, reducing on the distances women and children have to walk to collect water. I'm sure we are going to see more families replicating it. By the way, that area is a water-stressed area. Masaka is not alone in the water crisis. Kayunga is also one area that is water stressed. Take, for example, these children at a broken borehole, the only source of water in the village. Luckily for them, it could be broken, but they can still get water by improvising a mechanism. This toddler is battling with thirst. It comes here under the scorching sun to get water for drinking. As the young struggle with the system to get water, one can only wonder what the people are going through. Especially during the drought, because we find this area experiences a lot of drought. Actually, it's an unusual drought, in that people really fail to get water to drink. People fail to harvest any crop. Sometimes they go they, they, they go hungry simply because they have nothing in their shambas. So those who are engaged in uh, vegetable production and uh, uh, animal keeping, they really have found this kind of uh, arrangement very useful to them because they use this water to feed the animals during the droughts, but at the same time they also use that water to irrigate. Just like in Masaka, children here also line with their utensils at this only functioning borehole for long hours in search for water. For Jajana Tume, life is extremely difficult as she is subjected to walking a long distance in search for water. During rainy seasons, she uses this togero, which is a traditional rainwater harvesting mechanism. Unfortunately, this container can't store large volumes of water. Like the other community-based organization, Nsona Development Association, based in Kayunga Subcounty, Kayunga District is also addressing the problem by teaching their fellow community members on how to enhance their drinking water supplies by trapping every drop of water whenever it rains. This community has gone even further by training communities on how to construct dams that fill up from runoff water on the ground. Each of these dams can hold a capacity of between 5 to 20,000 liters. Depending on the size and usage, these dams can hold water for several months. Here is a simple drama reflecting life in a household, offering an eye-opener to people in the audience on how to get clean drinking water. With the help of the UNDP and UNEP Poverty Environment Initiative, PEI, NEMA has intervened in some of these districts in rural Uganda, creating a difference by showing viable examples that when people conserve the environment, they can better their livelihoods. This project has been on the ground for five years. Of course, the first few years uh, were used for mobilization, bringing the communities on board, identifying the target groups and so on and so on. Okay? So, five years down the road, you have 
individuals who are replicating the projects on their own. To me, this is very good. If there was none, then I would be getting worried. So what we need to do, therefore, is to build on this achievement so that we can carry out more sensitization, carry out more sensitization so that more people can come on board. Thank you.